Hi everyone, welcome to another webisode of The Good Doctor on EasyLiving.com. Today I'm in the company of Dr. Rami Nematullah from the Allied Diagnostic Center in Dubai. Welcome to the program. Thank you for having me on the show, Shah. So today we're going to be talking about cardiovascular diseases or as commonly referred to as the silent killer. For our viewers who may not know what it is, can you please elaborate? Well, it is called the silent killer because uh, first it is the number one cause of death in the world, okay? And uh, most importantly, it can happen without any symptoms. So a lot of patients not having any symptoms like chest pain or not having any symptoms like shortness of breath or any, anything that will tell them, go do some exams, test yourself, suddenly they can have a heart attack and even 10% approximately of these patients don't even make it to the emergency room. They can die on the spot and not even make it to, to the hospital. Well, obviously that's a, a scary thought where someone can be normal, be walking down the street and experience chest pain and that could lead to death. So the question is, how can people recognize it and how can we prevent it? So there are definitely many risk factors, okay, that can lead to people having heart disease. And uh, the problem is that we have uh, a progression over so many long years, 10, 20 years, where there is some plaques building up in the arteries causing blockages, but these blockages will not become symptomatic, will not cause the patient to have any symptoms like uh, the one we, we already talked about, uh, before the blockage is severe enough. Okay, so the patient can have a plaque of maybe blockage of 30% in his artery, right. not feel anything. However, this plaque at any time can rupture and then a heart attack can happen even if the plaque is not causing any symptom. Right. Okay? So this is why uh, uh, this can happen at any time. However, the most important thing is to know the risk factors. So the first point, knowing those risk factors, checking for them, the cholesterol, diabetes, etc., doing the checkups, so the screening for them, to be able to prevent the risk factors. And the, the second important point is to know where do we stand. How do we diagnose it in terms of how do we detect it? How can we see how, if the heart is in good shape or not? The first point we said we need to prevent it from progressing fast or stop the progression of uh, or the bad effect of these risk factors. But at the same time, for many people, it's already there. However, it's not causing any symptoms and we need to know about it. There are uh, new technologies that I would like to call non-invasive technologies. Mm. There are two uh, big categories. One is with the CT scan, it's called CT angiography of the heart, mm -hmm. and one is with MRI, magnetic resonance imaging, and it's called cardiac MRI. Now, each one of these tests is different. The, the first one, the CT, the coronary angiography, it's a test that looks at the heart arteries, the ones that have the blockage in them that can cause the heart attack. And the equivalent of this one is the conventional angiography where we used to do a catheterization of the patient which is a, uh, a quite invasive exam. So this one in a lot of patients can replace this invasive procedure. It can be done in five minutes. It uses radiation, but very low radiation because the new systems are really equipped to reduce the amount of radiation. So in basically few minutes, the patient can know exactly what's happening in his arteries. And if he's, if he's at higher risk to have a heart attacks in the future or uh, uh, or his arteries are completely normal and then he only needs some uh, lifestyle changes. Now the other type of exams is the cardiac MRI and also this is a very um, important technology because unlike CT it uh, doesn't use any radiation so it's even less invasive for the body of the patient okay so it's even safer than a uh, CT scan but this one we cannot see the heart arteries the blockages inside the arteries but we can see the the heart muscle the function of the heart, if there is any heart attack that had happened previously and even the patient not knowing about it, this is really, this can be detected by the MRI and this way it will lead us to knowing exactly what's there in the heart and uh, how we should basically uh, push further for the treatment, surgery or just prevention. So my final question for you Dr. Rami is, who should uh, be conscientious of their heart problem and from what age should they start coming in getting detected? I think this is uh, for our viewers the most important question because uh, everyone's gonna ask okay these are nice technologies but 
What can I do with them? Well, definitely the indication will have to be decided by the doctor, the physician, the cardiologist of the patient. Mm. But the patient will probably will be pushed more to go to his doctor and to ask if he has one or many of the risk factors for, the, uh, for heart disease or cardiovascular diseases. So definitely if a patient is a smoker, if he has diabetes, if he has high blood pressure, high cholesterol, advanced age, heart problems, obesity, lack of physical exercise, all these are risk factors that should push patients. The more you have of these, the more you are at higher risk, so you should go and seek um, more advanced uh, medical advice. In addition to these patients, you can have no risk factors but have symptoms that can be related to your heart, for example, shortness of breath, palpitation, chest pain, left arm pain, jaw pain, all these symptoms mm. can also be symptoms of angina or a chest pain related for the heart so this patient should go there now regarding the age question there is really no cut off age for for people what we usually use is maybe 40 45 for men and 45 to 50 for women but i would i would recommend these exams to be done earlier for patients that have more risk factors mm. and maybe at this age for patients that have one or no risk factors. Right, so but if a youngster is obese then obviously there's, they fall in the category of being in a, a high risk category. Yeah, if you're, if you're a 30 year old but you have a family history, you right. smoke, you're, you're overweight, then in this case maybe you, you should seek uh, medical um, advice before the, the other groups. Well, thank you very much for this insightful information. If you've got any thoughts, comments or questions about this subject matter, please leave them in the comments section down below and the good doctor will be happy to respond. Thanks for watching The Good Doctor on easyliving.com where you can find anything and everything lifestyle.